In this really fast video, I'm gonna to explain to you two different things you should do when you're creating a Python project. Let's get to it. All right, so first things first, let's say I have this Python project, which is doing some really incredible things like importing PyAuto GUI, Selenium, uh, Beautiful Soup 4, uh, and then it's doing some awesome stuff. It's subscribing to the channel, and then it's doing some more awesome stuff. Um, this is a good one, by the way. You should always do that one. This is great, right? Now I have Beautiful Soup 4, but I, maybe I don't have these yet. I need to make sure I install these. Well, one way you can kind of see what you have currently installed is by checking Python, right? So if you do Python M pip and then list, you can see all of the packages you have installed. And it's taking a while because I have a lot installed. Now, this is okay. But what if I need a specific version of PyAuto Pi Auto GUI? Maybe I need PyAuto GUI version 2, let's say. But maybe in a different project, I need PyAuto GUI 3. Well, one of the issues here is that if we go ahead and look uh, and find PyAuto GUI here, which it's somewhere in this list right here. Okay, well, version 2 and version 3 probably don't exist. But let's just say that version 2 and version 3 it did exist. If that were the case and I needed version two for this project and then I installed version three on another project, it would overwrite version two. So I'd be in a bit of trouble because then when I needed version two again, I need to reinstall version two. So that doesn't work very well. One way you can get around this is by using what's called Python virtual environments. So let's go ahead and create one of those. So in order to create a Python virtual environment, you're going to type Python and the version that you want to use. So in this case, we're going to do three. So if I do version for this, we can see that this is version 3.10. But if I just do Python and then version, we can see this is 3.8. But maybe I want 3.10. So I'm going to do Python 3M. And then I'm going to do VN for virtual environment. And then we're going to name it whatever we want. Let's call it Hi. All right, so it has created our virtual environment. You can see we have this folder here. And within this folder, we have a couple of things. We have some scripts in order to activate our, per our virtual environment. And we have a includes folder, which will include the packages we want. Now, if we activate our Python virtual environment by basically executing this activate uh, .bat script, which is actually it's .bat because I'm on Windows. If you're on another system, it probably will be .sh or something like that. Uh, one thing also to note is that I am using a command prompt here. I'm not using the bash window. So if I go ahead and do this, we can now see that there's a prefix to the path here, which is hi. That means I'm now in this directory. And now before, if you remember when I typed Python version, we saw it was version 3.8, but now it's version 3.10. Because if we go into this PyVN configuration, we can see that it's actually pointing to the specific Python version we want to use when we're within this Python virtual environment. So that's awesome. But another interesting thing is if we do Python M pip list, we can see that we actually don't have anything installed except for pip, because you need pip. So what does that mean? Well. That actually means that we can install only what we need for our project. So in this case, we can install PyAuto GUI, we can install Selenium, and we need to install Beautiful Soup 4. Now, that's perfect because usually what you want for a project is to have as few dependencies as possible because it reduces the size of the project overall, and it usually will make things faster if you're not importing things you don't need to. But another thing that we can do here is use something that's called requirements.txt. This is simply just a text file where you can specify Python packages. And when you do this, you can, you can specify like equals like 4.2 or something like that if you want. Uh, but basically, you can just specify the packages you want. Now, the reason this is nice is because you can just do a single pip command in order to install all of these. So let's go ahead and type that out now. So if we do Python m pip install dash r requirements dot text, we can now see that uh, 
da, 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 da. no such file spelt it wrong and if you spell requirements properly then it will actually do what we want it to do so there we go it's installing this now if we do python mpip list we can see a lot more things but that's because we've installed beautiful soup 4 we've installed pi auto gui and what was our other thing selenium we installed selenium now all these other things are just uh, dependencies for those three libraries or those three packages but now we have a file so we know specifically which packages we need another huge bonus of having this file is that this file can be checked into source control if you don't know how to use source control check out this video right here and uh, yeah teach you how to use git but one of the reasons using source control with requirements.txt is amazing is because usually when you merge a change into your main branch, you can have it set up so that it will execute some form of code. A lot of cases, it just pushes that change to be live on some server. But if it's doing that and it needs to now install a bunch of things, well, this text file is just there. So the default thing, for instance, with Docker, you can specify specific commands it needs to run in order to set up your Docker instance. But in this case, you can just have a single command of Python m pip install r requirements.txt, and it will always be all of the things you need. So that's it. This is a really simple way of making your Python project experience just a little bit easier and less error prone. If you think I missed something that maybe you do whenever you create a new Python project, drop a comment down below, or just drop a comment to say hi. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. But remember, I'm Jake. You're awesome. This has been Making a Python Project. Cheers.